This is my 1972 Alfa Romeo Giulia Super. And it's the most fun car I've ever driven. Allow me to explain why. <laughs> That's a proper noise. Right, this is my 1972 Alfa Giulia Super 1.3. I've owned the car for about three years now. We got it from Bologna in Italy, where I just fell in love with this little angry looking Italian sports saloon. And we've since brought it home, and over the three years I've owned it, there's been a huge amount of work that me and my dad have put into this car, and money as well. So we've done things like change all the suspension bushes, it's got alcoholic springs on it, pony dampers, rebuilt carburettors, a rolling road tune, so there's a huge list. But all of it is geared towards making this the best road car it can be. And well, the results are magical. <laughs> oh man, this car is just something else. The way it goes down the road is like nothing I've ever driven. And it just doesn't get old, that motor. It's only a 1.3, so we've only got about 90 horsepower. But what that means is you can use every drop of the performance from this engine on the road and you can rev it out and you can enjoy that induction sound without breaking the speed limit and looking like a total hooligan on the road. It makes every journey a rally stage just to keep up with normal traffic, which I love. Oh, heel and toe down the five speed box. Lovely, slick, mechanical change as well. Short geared, you're always up and down the cogs. And this is an old car. So we've got unassisted steering, we've got narrow tires. So we've got plenty of feedback and delicacy through the wheel. It's heavy, it loads up, it lets you know what's going on. And the tweaks that I've made have just elevated the level of enjoyment. As standard, these are beautifully set up cars. They're comfortable, they're tourers, they've got space for four. But the thing about a 105 is that you've got a base to take it anywhere you want. You can leave it as a comfortable tourer or you can make it a little rampant rally car like I've done. The choice is yours. <laughs> and it feels so small because it is compared to modern cars. You can place it between the lines and the visibility. We've got a panoramic view out, tiny pillars. Cars were just better, weren't they, in the 70s? But then there's one of the coolest things about the Julia. And that's that we've got this driving experience. We've got this little road rally car. <laughs> but we've also got four doors and four huge seats. And I just love the idea of bringing a few mates with you in comfort and with practicality, a huge boot. And you can take it on long trips and have an absolute blast and share the experience, which I love. But it's a combination of things, you know? It's not just that amazing driving experience. It's the way this thing looks on the road. It looks so angry from the front. And if you look at the front of this car and imagine how it sounds, that's exactly how it sounds. Have a listen. <laughs> It's an angry little wasp, this car. It's up and at you, it wants to go. Straining at the leash. I just think it's so cool and so different. Because a coupe is predictable, isn't it? They're always svelte and beautiful, but you never see a saloon like this being driven hard and just really up for it on the right road. To me, anyway, this is just the coolest car in the world. I adore this thing. And I think it's gonna stay for a very long time. Now, if you want to see a full review of the Julia, then you can head to my channel, Ashraf on Cars. The link will be in the description. But right now, I'm just going to keep driving. <laughs>